And then finally, one of those legal experts that we're grateful to have, whose support we're grateful to have, is Steve Epstein. And I will tell you that I've known and worked with Steve for a number of years. He's been active in Mass Can Normal. And the moment <coughs> we were arrested, it was Steve who stood up and said, I bet they need a lawyer. And he made sure we didn't get taken off the jail. Steve? Actually, when Alan uh, St. Pierre contacted me and told me they were under arrest, I said, well, I don't think they're actually under arrest. I think they're just being held and they're going to be released, but get $80 together, $40 <coughs> each for the bail magistrate, just in case they are going to arrest him. Gentlemen, I hate to disappoint you, but you're not counted in the uniform crime and statistics as having been arrested. Ah, oh, I feel left out. Well, you should. Maybe next time we'll make it. Because that's one of the problems with marijuana law is that uh, very often the police have discretion as to whether to arrest and hold for bail or as in the case of, of Keith and Rick, uh, hold them just long enough to issue a criminal complaint application notice and a date for a hearing for a criminal complaint uh, before a clerk magistrate under Massachusetts law. And therefore our data in Massachusetts is skewed because there are a large number of people, I have one who will swear that he was stopped by a state trooper while smoking a joint, and the state trooper said, "If you tell, show, if you're honest with me, uh, I'll let you go." Not only did he let him go, he let him keep the joint he was smoking, the roach that was in his ashtray, and another joint that was elsewhere in the car. Why? He was a white middle-aged gentleman, I suspect, who was polite and, and conformed to the officer. Had he been black, Hispanic, Asian, I don't know what the trooper would have done. But this law is unjust. It is unconstitutional under the Constitution of Massachusetts. This is, after all, a state in which John Adams uh, grew up. Say, uh, John Adams here. <laughs> I feel bad for that trooper and all the troopers that just got slandered by what you said there. <laughs> there are a lot of troop of law enforcement personnel that do not want to enforce the marijuana laws. Oh, I, I understand that. And I understand that uh, not all, in fact, a small minority of state troopers or other law enforcement personnel take into consideration a person's race or gender or age when determining to exercise their arbitrary power as to whether or not to arrest or not. The point being made is it is just that. It is an arbitrary power that is being exercised because there is no control over the discretion involved in making the decision to let this person go without even taking their marijuana from them, take this marijuana from them and let the person go, take the marijuana... Fact, in fact, what, didn't the officer who arrested you say if you apologize, we'll let you go? That was at the preliminary hearing. Oh, that was right. <laughs> they would have dropped it if we apologized. <laughs> then there's a third scenario where they take the marijuana and they give you a citation and tell you you're going to be summoned to court, or just orally tell you to be summoned to court, and as technically happened in the case of, of Rick and Keith. And then there are those who are handcuffed, put in the back of the cruiser, taken to the police station, and held for the bail magistrate to provide them $40 if the court is open. That means there are virtually five different scenarios that can be conducted here by a law enforcement officer, and it is arbitrary as to how it is done. We do know this from the statistics, though. It is clearly a youth-oriented arrest and hold for, for bail magistrate. It is clearly youth-oriented to arrest and, pro and summons and prosecute. As people grow older, uh, apparently the either certainly less of us smoke marijuana and since everybody else confessed here I'll confess that I started <laughs> smoking marijuana when I was 15 which was 37 years ago I didn't confess. <laughs> <laughs> I've smoked marijuana in the past and I have liked it like uh, Mayor Bloomberg it is a blessing and the primary duty of government is to protect us so that we can exercise our liberty and enjoy the blessings of life and we are going to fight this. We are going to file the motion for reconsideration. We'll see what happens with the motion for reconsideration. We will be uh, arguing vigorously to the jury uh, and to the judge to let us argue to the jury, as, as Professor Nesson said, uh, to tell them about their historic right 
to nullify the law. Uh, I don't want to steal any thunder, Charles, but I think you really liked Judge Parsons' quote, which I will paraphrase. Judge Parsons was the third or fourth Chief Justice of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and he attended the Massachusetts Constitutional Convention that was determining whether Massachusetts would accept the Constitution of the United States. And bottom line, he said that if Congress and the federal government were to usurp their powers, we can always rely on the juries to put them in their place. And that is what we intend to do. Uh, Rick and Keith are, are brave souls in the sense that they are risking a criminal conviction on their record, but Massachusetts law is benign enough that they are unlikely to see the inside of a house of correction for anything more than a very short time, and that by pressing the issue, we hope that we are going to change the laws because sooner or later, people have to wake up and realize that the Constitution of Massachusetts in particular, I think, is very eloquent in making it clear that there should be a presumption of liberty when the legislature chooses to uh, disable citizens from totally from their pursuit of liberty. And I want to thank you all for coming here today. Uh, we're next to in court on May 12th, as was previously said. We hope to see you there. Uh, we will be in touch to let you know the details of the next press conference. Professor Nesson, do you want to wrap anything up? Um, Well, actually, no. I <laughs> it was all beautifully said. And uh, I think that uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, folks. Thank you.